We are back in Planet Zoo and most importantly back in New Tropic Zoo building another habitat. The habitat we're going to be creating today is going to be in the far left hand corner over here. Just here. It's a small area so we need to build a small enclosure. That's right, we are back in New Tropic Zoo and I believe this is episode 19. Someone actually corrected me that last episode, I got the episode number incorrect. So hopefully this time it is correct, we are on episode 19. And we're building a habitat in the far corner here. Now, this zoo is getting a little bit complicated because we are seeing some lag spikes. We've got a lot of detailing, even though it is still a relatively small zoo, there's a lot of details within the habitats what add to that um, that piece count and make it lag a little bit. So unfortunately, I don't know how many episodes we've actually got left of New Tropic Zoo, but I'm just going to go with it, possibly until I break my PC or have a mental breakdown because it won't load. <laughs> but yeah, today we're building it in a very small area, so we need to build a small habitat and of course, we're going to have it modern. We're going to have it with the same colour schemes. And, of course, we're going to go circular. We've got a circular building right next to us, which is the Caracal Habitat. Kind of like a circular aviary, isn't it? And I wanted to kind of like match that, but also be able to build a circular habitat what's also very small in this small area and spoiler alert it actually turns out this is quite a large habitat over a thousand square meters um so stay tuned for how i pull that off in this small space but going back to the circle we're using the mod the mod the mod we're not using them no mods we're using the mud column technique to create the circle and we're actually going to be creating a habitat for the common warthog. So I've not actually mentioned that yet. We're going to be creating a habitat for the common warthog. And I already thought I did. And then it turns out I looked back at the episodes and looked around the zoo. And the first habitat we ever created was for the aardvarks. For some reason, I thought it was for the common hot warthog. So it, th that came out in my brain for creating a habitat for that. Realised it wasn't. So I thought, right, we need a habitat for the first animal I ever had in a zoo. FYI, the first animal I ever created a habitat for in franchise mode, in fact, was the common warthog. It does make for a good um, first animal and it's part of the base game as well, which is even better. So we've got the common warthog today and we're going to be giving a habitat to them that they've never seen before. This is going to be an amazing habitat. We're going to have a circular um, viewing area, which you can see me creating now. We just need to delete some spots because we need an entrance into the backstage area. That's right, in this habitat, we're going to have a backstage area where our animals can go in and get a little bit of privacy. And you're going to see a backstage area created with all the props and stuff like that. So once the necessary um, areas of the circular was deleted and we had the outside area just need some filling in some gaps but it's pretty good to go that outside viewing area right now for the guests it was time to build the main building the main infrastructure and the hard shelter for animals and we went with something a little bit different it kind of put this like little ledge at the bottom of our wall we're going to create a custom wall but it is going to still keep quite simple we're just going to use the plaster pieces because that's what fits that's what fits with the modern design and we're going to copy that and duplicate that all around the edge and try to plan out this area here and then i thought right i need to do something a little bit different i need like a circular roof i don't know why i thought this i have done it with the uh, staff zone if you remember that episode we created a very similar roof in that episode um, for our staff and wanted kind of like the, the roof to bend over onto the roof and look all as one from like the base to the roof i hope that makes sense sometimes i say a lot of stuff and it doesn't make a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense in my brain because i know what i'm building but when i'm trying to describe it to you watching on youtube it doesn't really make much sense when i watch back my videos so hopefully you are keeping up with what i'm trying to do my mind can be very scatty at sometimes and, and you know I, I have got a bit of a wild um, creative side and i do get lost and try to describe what i'm actually trying to do but yeah kind of like a circular bendy roof what goes onto the roof you'll see as the video goes on how the roof goes on and then just increasing the height and at this point i was thinking it, something just doesn't look right like i'm building it here and something doesn't look right it looks all the same it looks very basic and bland it looks like every other building that i've built in the zoo and i didn't want this for this habitat like i said we might be coming to the end of this zoo here so i wanted to kind of I throw myself in the, out my comfort zone a little bit and I thought the only thing I know what to do 
in situations like this when something doesn't look right is to create different height variants within the same building so that's what we're going with this is going to be the tallest part with the bendy roof and i hope it makes sense now it's coming together you see how it bends and comes flat again We've got a little bit of overhang on the roof and we're just going to fill it in this area with the roof and this is going to be the tallest part of the building all the buildings going to be connected but we're going to have to actually three different height variants it's just getting that structure in place which is the hard part once it's in place you can just start building onto it right so this is how it came out looking you can see i've got it separated to delete the rest of the walls because they was doing me head in i thought no i need to kind of restart that bit but we've got this building we've also created um, a window here which i'm actually going to extend because i just didn't like the look of it being such a small window we're gonna have like a wraparound window giving that more modern um, aesthetic as well and, and making the building look a little bit more modern fitting into the rest of the zoo of course with it being a modern zoo so we're just going to wrap this around we need a smaller piece because this is not going to fit in so let's get a smaller glass panel in here let's rotate that round and fit that in nicely and then we just need to fill these plaster pieces with the gaps fill all the gaps in and there we go right moving on to redoing the roof because i thought hmm it's just not perfect you can see how the roof is actually thicker than the bent area at the back I wasn't having it, my perfectionist side came out, my OCD side came out and I was like, nope, we're going to create a custom roof as well. Just so it's the same thickness as the bendy area. I mean, most people wouldn't even notice that, but me, I would know it was there, it would do me head in and I would need to change it. So I thought, change it now rather than coming back later when it's more difficult to change and there's more pieces attached and then we could, everything will look good and everything will fit in. You can see the bending pieces at the back now just filling in those gaps and it's the same um width the same thickness as the roof now and, and that's what i wanted that's the the look i was going for now just finishing off these corners and filling in all the little tedious bits here and i was quite i'm not a bricklayer so i really didn't know <laughs> how i wanted this bit to look i started with the slanted and i thought no that doesn't look right so i went with kind of like the square on but uh, of an angle and i thought yeah that looks a little bit better but no what looks better is just square on and again it's that it's that making sure that nothing goes unmissed and adding those little bit of details but will make a bigger effect when everything comes together and that's what i always do when i'm in planet zoo you see me just playing about with roofing ideas now adding a little bit of trim on the roof in the end i didn't really go with it but it's all about trying stuff it's all about trial and error does this look right if it doesn't go back change it does it look okay okay it does look okay we'll stick with it i hope i'm making sense so after all the gaps were filled in it looked as something like this now you can see i've started building the right hand side what is going to be the main backstage area and i've added these wooded wooden pieces i don't know what i was going with i just thought it looked good and it looked modern it looked abstract and it kind of went with the theme and it broke up the monotony of the building looking everything the same i added the same on the right hand side as well but a different variants of um not high of, of length so to speak I just think it, it it looks good i don't know i kind of built it and i thought wait what am i doing here and then i thought no it actually does look pretty decent so i just it kind of stuck right building out this outer house now this other other building which um which will form the backstage area and form where our not our guests work can go in but our zookeepers can go in they can tend to our animals they can separate the animals well it's going to look like they can separate the animal because that's not a functioning planet zoo and obviously we're going to build gates and stuff like that what look like they can move we're going to build a separate roof here with a different height like i said we're going to have three different height variants and we're just going to bulk out this area now we are um kind of like i wouldn't say i'm getting bored of building in new tropic zoo but it is getting a little bit tedious everything i'm building is modern and i want to build something stuff what looks kind of rustic we're probably expecting a new pack coming around the corner obviously console had just been announced so everyone's looking forward to that but honestly i am expecting a new pack it's that time it's been long enough that we get a new pack they might hold off on the pack thinking right we need to really concentrate on the release of console mode mode hopefully they won't because i feel like i need a new pack at this moment i need some more building pieces i need to be able to build something a little bit different and stop building kind of like these modern designs in this zoo now i'm not saying i'm not enjoying building a new tropic
Coffee Zoo, but it would be nice to build a little bit something different. But this project is taking up all my time. I can only amount to enough time to release one video per week, and I'm actually struggling to do that at the moment. And you'll notice the tutorials have kind of stopped. I have got stuff in the works because of the console release coming out. I have got some tutorials in the works, so stay tuned and keep your eye open for them. But I have struggled with time to build other stuff because this is taking up the majority of my time new tropic zoo and and it, the plan was never it to be this massive zoo i always wanted it i've always said and i've always wanted it to be this kind of like smaller zoo based in the grasslands of africa but keeping it very modern and seeing what you can do with smaller habitats instead of massive habitats seeing what can be, can be done with kind of like modern abstract ideas but very high detailed habitats in small areas and creating those those small habitats as for this being on the steam workshop page i'm not too sure just have a look i don't know if i'm, I, I'm going to put it up a lot of people have been saying that with buildings what i've been creating a new tropic zoo is it on the steam workshop page can we download it a lot of the time i'm actually not putting them on the steam workshop page because i'm waiting until everything's complete once this zoo's complete the whole zoo will be on the steam workshop page and the individual habitats will be on there as well because at this moment of time i just kind of want people to enjoy for what they are my creations and then if there's a, a lot of demand and i feel like something needs to be put on the steam workshop page then when the zoo is complete i promise i will put everything on the all the habitats included and separate as well as for this habitat you can see i'm just like putting some glass in i just thought there's not enough glass i know that sounds weird but i thought just add some glass in it adds to that modern theme add a little glass roof adds light coming into the inside part as well which is very important you don't want everything you know really gloomy and dark and then just filling out the gaps here at the back you can see using the same trees of what i've got on my rock face and in my planters i love this tree i don't know what it is i just really like it <laughs> and then at the back i thought right i need to sort this back area out sorting the pathing out and then creating a hole the hole is obviously going to be where our zookeepers can come in and get to our enclosure i'm going to add the habitat gate on the inside and i will show you step by step how i do that as well Obviously, this is not a functional gate. It just looks good, doesn't it? it? Instead of having just an open space there, we might as well have a gate. So let's flu, flu, let's flu, let's fill this um, this area in with the plaster pieces, giving it a more clean look on the inside. And then we'll get to building this gate. Now I'm going to separate this gate into two. Now what I mean by that is I'm going to have like look what well, it's going to look like as a staff entrance and an animal exit and entrance. I'm just going to build this slot first as well just to make sure that our animals can actually traverse down it and make it look more realistic in, in the same winner winner we've got two birds with one stone there it looks more realistic and it will actually be more functional right we're going to go up with the black uh, metal pieces well the conservation pieces will look like metal and we're just going to fill this space in and create a door frame that's the first thing you want to do when created something like this and then it gives the impression that the gate can slide up and down. We're going to add some handles on there as well. So it looks like it can be physically moved up and down. And it also looks electric like it goes into the wall. Um, maybe you can press a button and it goes up and down. I'm just trying to think of realistic aspects, what I can add to habitats, what will also make it look better. And I had to, I, it was quite fiddly this actually, I had to play around with different lengths of mesh and stuff like that to be able to get two different kind of gates. Like I said on the left is going to be like an animal gate and on the right we're going to have, have our gate what our zookeepers can traverse through and get through. Well, give the impression that they can anyway. And we're going to separate it with the conservation pieces again. I just love, at this point I pretty much use conservation wood pieces in every single build honestly the conservation pack is one of the best packs convince me otherwise in the comment section i know it is one of the best packs along with the aquatic pack because a these animals what you get in the aquatic 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 oh my god i cannot speak today i think i need more coffee the aquatic pack animals are brilliant you get in like the penguins and stuff in there which was the first time we got penguins and then also you get in the aquatic four rocks which if you know me you know i love a good four rock um, and then the conservation pack is next but just because of all the backstage area what the conservation um the dlc brings and these conservation wood pieces as well i love them absolutely love them 
Right, right hand side, we now pretty much finished. We're gonna add like a metal piece at the bottom here. This is something you would find on a, like a swing door. So I thought, let's add it, let's make it look realistic. Let's make it look like it would be functional, even though we all know it's not. On the outside, you can see I filled the gaps where the path was done after I'd done the fence. And I just wanna talk about these uh, these paths. Obviously there's gaps, nobody likes gaps in Planet 2. It can be a pain in the ass. And the pathing system isn't the best pathing system we've got in any game. And they need to look at Prehistoric Kingdom for the pathing system, I think, they really do. Um, so I'm just trying to fill these gaps as best I can. It's not gonna be perfect. And I've, I've come to terms with that. You know me, I, I, I'm a bit perfectionist, I love things to be perfect, but I've had to come to returns with, with the path in, it can't. Just get it looking the best you can. And if it means playing about with it on the grid and taking it off the grid and bending it around corners and stuff like that, that's what we've got to do. And you can see it's pretty much full, isn't it, here? I'm just trying to fill this gap so we don't see any green. You see little patches of green, we're going to see it, it's going to happen. But just kind of like hover your mouse over where your paths are going to be and then just place them down and hopefully you will cover the, the gaps, really. A lot of people ask me how I get the paths flush with my own custom paths. Well, this is how I do it. I just play about with it and try loads of different things and move my mouse in slight movements and just play stuff down. Right, inside, this is the backstage area, but we need to spruce this up, don't we? We need some props, so let's do that. Look how better it looks with props. And by the way, if you want props, I have this set on my Steam Workshop page. This is what I pretty much used in everything. And the best thing about this is that you can go into it in the all setters modular pieces. So you can just grab the control center and place it how you want it in your own zoos in your backstage areas. Right, on the front, it's just a matter of adding foliage here and add, adding some props and adding the, the pieces what we need for, you know, the enrichment items like the mud bath there. And there we go, with an education board put on the right hand side, this habitat is pretty much complete. I've actually put the warthogs in, let's see if we can find them. Well, there they are. Maybe you want to go outside Warthogs, maybe, and check out the lovely habitat I've created for you instead of chilling underneath and going to sleep. Is he actually going to sleep? Get straight in his, straight in his bed, straight in his bed. But yeah, I'm really happy how this has come out looking on the inside. We've got all the props we needed. We spruced up the area. In this part here, I've actually added... Um, a keeper's hut, I just thought just for ease and I always suggest adding a keeper hut with every habitat especially if you're playing franchise mode so I thought let's create a little staff area here I might add some more stuff but we've got the control center there and stuff like that we've got a little bit of window here and outside the window we've got a little planter as well I just wanted to break up this wall it just looked all the same to be honest with you and it looked too long um here we just need to put a, a door in i've not done that yet so we need to have a door in and we need to block off this area to actual the the um the staff make sure the pathing underneath is all staff pathing and not normal pathing so our pesky guests cannot get out there oh, you went out for two minutes and now you're coming back in what are you playing at <laughs> but yeah it's pretty much complete added another gate there as well just a very simple gate with a handle and our it looks like our guests are actually coming to view our warthogs already so yeah there we go and if we zoom out a little bit how well does it fit in with the aesthetic the modern aesthetic of the rest of the zoo it just fits in so well and i'm glad i did this circular viewing area as well instead of it being square it just looks it just looks better it breaks up the shapes kind of thing i know what i'm talking about if you don't um, but yeah that is the video let's have a little zoom out and look at new tropic zoo it really is coming together and in fact, we'll zoom in on this lovely waterfall and we'll end the video here. Probably one of my favourite places in the zoo. Love water. Love being around water in real life as well. There's a, there's a fact you didn't know about me about my, my in real life stuff. Right, my name's Adam. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you are new around here and you like the look of this series, I've got the full series from episode one to this episode, episode 19, in a playlist on my channel. Go and check them out and subscribe. You might as well if you're into Planet Zoo. Everybody, please press that like button. I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next Planet Zoo video.